Let me just start this video off with a simple statement. This isn't really meant to be one of those poetic video essays with long deep dives into concepts filled with insight and theory. Rather, this is just me noticing something as a normal gamer and going, hmm, I kind of want to talk about that. I have a YouTube channel, might as well. And the topic in question is that multiplayer games don't really have to be good to have fun on. As what can largely define the fun in these multiplayer games is the people you play it with. Before anyone goes and sprints to the comments, I'm not saying this is a grand revelation, but rather that I wanted to take the time to point out some examples of this, and why I think it's interesting the differing relationships different types of games take on how to handle that dynamic that really at the end of the day it's based off of your friend group. So with that out of the way, if you're still willing to watch, let's get right into this. For this video, I will bring up three examples. Retail Royale, a multiplayer game that is quite awful, but made great due to friends. Fortnite, a game that due to creative and various game modes can attract tons of players, however due to being taken too seriously may dilute the experience. And finally, Friends vs Friends, a game that is built around playing against your friends. So first up, Retail Royale. For those who don't know, which I'm going to assume is most of you, this game is not very popular, Retail Royale is a simplistic IKEA battle royale, where one has to walk around an IKEA gathering tools and weapons before trying to be the last one alive. So why do I bring this title up? Well, several reasons. One, the core gameplay of it is rather boring, and I'm not talking about the battle royale aspects, which I personally dislike, more so that loot in Retail Royale often feels stupid or pointless. The weapons can be deconstructed so you can get exactly what you want with enough of them, and the various weapons only really have slightly differing fire rates or damage stats that don't make a lot of difference in combat. On top of this, the XP progression is insanely slow to the point where it's basically non-existent, so you are lucky if you will ever win enough rounds to get one level's worth. So if the regular gameplay is kind of a mess, why would I mention it? Well, because with the friends, this title is hilarious, and there are several things the game does to expand this fact. First, the game has something called breakers. Maybe they were added as a strategy area denial device, but in practicality, in duo's rounds, you will find yourself sprinting up to these, hitting them, and then running away as your duo cries about being trolled by this idiotic occurrence. Next, we have the fact that basically all furniture in the game can be picked up and thrown. Why does that matter, you ask? Well, in an actual round, it honestly really doesn't, but in duos, you control your poor friend by chucking a fucking bed at them or stacking them over and over again, so that way the two of you can do some stupid shenanigans climbing up some building that gets you both killed. Finally, it's the fact that the game recognizes these facts and allows for custom rounds, a feature that, while not particularly special, allows for the beauty of all this random, disorganized mess to become a perfect canvas for you and your friends to mess around on. I also think I really need to point out the obvious factor. It's stupid. It's an IKEA battle royale. Of course you and your friends are going to be able to get up to stupid nonsense on it. And I just want to showcase a couple of clips to really articulate how the game is truly given life by friends, rather than by itself. It's more beautiful than me and you together, but trust me in you. That was awesome. That was fucking awesome. Maybe. Does Don't make have... me call him. No, wait, that's... <laughs> no, wait, I'm not going to explain what that does. Oh, no, no, you don't. You have the most useless item in the game right now. No, shut up, I'm <laughs> the police. Stop it. <laughs> I said stop. I keep... I'm missing. We keep missing. Leave me alone. <laughs> Why am I getting hit already? Oh, oh, oh. This is normal. You need to I think not I see die by more. the bots. <clears throat> the bots aren't dangerous, but they can kill you if you're not careful. The fuck oh my you god, mean they aren't dead. dangerous? This guy is running after me with a metal pipe. <laughs> yeah, okay, let's see if you can. I got brain. I'm gonna <laughs> kill you. Are you okay, I'm Sophia? No! I'm turning into a raptor right now. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> Next on our list is Fortnite. Everyone knows Fortnite, regardless of what your opinions on it, it isn't really core to this video. Rather, what is important is the environment Fortnite creates. Now, different people respond to that environment and how those responses can help make it far better with friends or a game you rather hate to play with friends. 
Fortnite, as I am aforementioned, has creative mode, which is single-handedly its greatest asset. The ability to make a game within a game that can be any genre, type, or manner that you want is sure to attract players of all kinds, even those who prior would have shunned the thought of touching the game. This pure freedom that Fortnite offers, combined with it being free, offers a great title for various players to enjoy. So why mention the effects of Friends? Well, because while Retail Royale fosters an environment for mania and fun, Fortnite is at least taken seriously and, in the process, portrays a downfall to the effects that Friends can have on a title. Fortnite, just like Retail, with the proper group, can be a silly game that is easily absurd at times and fun at others, playing creative or battle royale. But unlike Retail, some people actually play Fortnite competitively. This effect can be great at times, and for some players, that is where the beauty of Fortnite is. However, it is also here that contention may arise, as if someone really just wants to get on and relish in the beauty of the stupidity that Fortnite offers to them, and their duo wishes for fame push into higher limits, can create a dynamic that can ruin the fun of the game entirely, as the two are just not really working together, and instead are contrasting each other, which creates more of an antagonist-type dynamic, which really can make the game not fun at all. Finally, I want to close out with Friends vs. Friends. This game looks at the issue I just stated with Fortnite, and I think articulates it and highlights it to a much better degree, um, because it takes this idea of contention and goes, well, that's all we want in the game. And honestly, it isn't a horrible idea. The concept of putting friends against each other in hard competition goes back to, quite literally, board games. The joy of beating your friends in a game and losing sometimes and wanting to push harder in order to change the deck when you lose those rounds is a very entertaining dynamic that's sure to keep players entrailed. However, much like Fortnite, I raise a potential issue. The idea of this contention requires a careful balance of two things. One being tone, which I've already talked about, it's if one wants to be serious and the other doesn't, that mismatch tone can ruin a night. And two being skill. This one is very evident here, and it's also evident in Fortnite and every other title. I think it's a major pitfall this game in particular faces, though, at least in terms of its central motif. Unlike the board games of prior, this game is in part largely skill-based. While Monopoly may require the ability to be strategic, it is a lot less than being able to push and hit shots in a weapon in, with a weapon in an FPS. This issue means that if two friends are on and one is clearly better than the other, the misconnection may grow into an animosity towards the title. And yes, I'm aware it could go the other way. The player takes up the challenge and pushes to be better, which would give the game even more value in their eyes. But I don't view this to be as likely. I feel like most players, if they play a game and their only experience with it is getting destroyed by their friend, they may be less inclined to play it again and much rather would play a game they're either better at or that a more healthy dynamic exists where all sides aren't in constant contention. And I think that is part of the reason why a lot of people may dislike titles that are very contentious and very competitive. So that's it. As I said, this isn't some grand essay about deep things in life. It isn't even deep at all. It's just I wanted to point out these three games and how all three of them handle the friend dynamics differently and get different results. Not to say any one is better than the other, and honestly, the call of which of these three titles is your favorite goes to y'all. I just wanted to point out how they're different and the potential complexities they may face due to those differences. Well, hopefully y'all enjoyed. If you got any commentary, the comments do exist, and I love hearing some feedback from y'all. I'd also like to hear y'all's opinions on these games. But this has been Christopher Beast, and I hope to see you all next time.